um, patrons. So, um, why is status important? I've talked a little bit about this. Um, one thing to keep in mind with high status patrons is that they um, may have boundary issues and think that they're entitled to your work and that's very difficult and they will they may think I mean this is true in a law firm if it's a partner they it's part of the structure of the organization they may know that they're high status and they may say they're entitled to your work they're entitled to you you working on their work before somebody else's work um, delivery they may think that they're going to get some kind of expedited um, service and that you are going to handle it yourself and not um, delegate it um, and those are just things to be aware of doesn't mean you can't do that it just means that be aware of ruffled feathers and they also may be in a position to create obstacles for you I had a partner who um, she really always came around and wanted freebies and you know like those little giveaway items that vendors would give away and you know I'm willing to let her have whatever very strange though behavior and um, she wanted her books delivered to her and you know a lot of times I don't mind like walking something around that's fine but it was this I really didn't want to do it for her because I didn't like her um, but she eventually like made things difficult um, so actually it's sometimes it's it's good to know that um, people will be very petty and um, it's in your best interest to protect yourself um, uh, there's a lot of sort of fakery, I think, um, in working in those kind of situations that you you have to um, keep your enemies close. Um, you want to deal with directly with the person who has the question, um, and then it's a communication issue. You can have a lot of miscommunication. Um, it's like a game of telephone because you know how that goes. It's bad, um, and you don't want to do non-work related work. So sisters, brothers, friends. Um, and this is because you can't give legal advice to anyone outside of um, your employer um, and the employees working on behalf of the employer um, it's just a very bad thing and you don't want to you don't want to go there and I hate it when I make an assumption that someone is talking about say some instruction on campus and if they're talking about you know the little theater that they work in in the next town it's really a different and the answers are going to be different to be honest um, you know my answer for Texas State University and what's happening there is going to be very different than for a small theater that's working um, in another town that means it's just going to be a different answer and typically you don't want to give that wrong information because it Believe me, I mean, you can still commit malpractice. I mean, I'm an uh, attorney, so I, I could still um, make a mistake, and those mistakes will be held against me, um, even if I'm not that person's attorney. So I have to be very careful, and I just think it is don't do the work. Um, and you can always just explain to people, I'm not an attorney, or I am an attorney, but I can't be your attorney because it's a conflict of interest. Um, the the rules of um, ethics do not permit me to do this for you. I mean, you know, sometimes you just have to come out and um, be very honest and upfront with people. And they will be persistent, uh, especially if they're your friends. It's really hard. Um, or your boss. You know, my boss is always asking me for things. And, it, you know, sometimes you just have to pretend like you don't know or you can't do it. Um, so, um, and you don't want to do anybody's work for them. So in a law firm setting, this actually work, this actually happens quite a bit. So um, associates and paralegals do legal research. So you actually don't do a lot of legal research yourself, which is really strange because, you know, here you are taking a class that's basically a legal research class, right? And you may end up having to teach legal research if you work uh, in an academic setting but you aren't doing legal research yourself. Um, and that is a weird thing. So you're supposed to be the expert, 
you're supposed to know how to do it. You're supposed to know how to start people out on that journey. And then if it gets really difficult, you're supposed to know how to do the most difficult, um, to intervene and do the most difficult parts or to help them with the most difficult parts of legal research, which is really odd because you're not actually supposed to do legal research. Um, this is the strangest thing about um, legal research and li librarianship to me. And this is one of the reasons why there isn't really a great book on uh, legal research for librarians. They're all either for law students or for the lay person. Because of this weird, this, this weird thing, it's almost like we need to know more than the normal law student or lawyer. Um, and way more than the layperson. It, it's just a strange place. Um, someday we'll write that book, um, but so far we'll just do the best we can. Um, a secretaries and other staff do not usually do legal work. Um, so if you get a legal research question from, you know, the office guy who opens the mail or who delivers the mail, you are, that's a clue that maybe this is for himself, for his personal self, um, because generally people won't give him that kind of work to do. Um, same with the secretary. You know the secretary is asking for the, an attorney she works for. And if an attorney asks for it or a paralegal, you don't know if it's their work. Paralegals are doing it for attorneys. And attorneys can be doing it for partners. So a lot of times, you're, you are going to be helping an intermediary and they won't really know as much as you do, and you, you know, but you can't get to the ultimate um, person who has the need. So a lot of times you just have to make do. Um, but you can find out if you're doing somebody else's work for them. Uh, we'll go through the questions. You can tell the kind of questions that someone would ask a paralegal to do. Pull all these cases, which means find the cases, find the legal opinions, and then print them out or download them. So, so they, they, they may be putting a book together, a brief book, or something for trial, right? Or um, you can just tell, you know, like find this particular form. And it's perfectly okay for us to, to do some of that work and to help them, but typically you aren't doing it yourself. You're just assisting um, in an emergency or um, you're just there to sort of train them to show them how to do it, but not to sit there and, and you know, print out 500 pages of something. You know, you're definitely not putting the books together. But every once in a while that people will try, they just don't want to do that menial beneath them kind of stuff. And so they'll just kind of try to, so they've gotten the, they've gotten the direction and they'll try to, pawn it off on the librarian, and um, they may be doing it with permission. And it's difficult to push back, but you have to triage, and that's the kind of work that can just suck up your day, and it's really not your job. That's not um, something you should be doing. So, you you know, as much as you can, um, try to avoid doing someone's work. And we'll, we'll talk about that with some of the questions instead, you know, how you deal with it.